Uh, I got some ice cream. And then uh, also yesterday, I checked out of rehab. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's where you were? That's right, Dan. I kept calling you. I know. Yeah. For like a I, month. I forgot to tell you about it. But uh, that's what I did. I bit the bullet. Social media rehab? Honestly, I'll get to that, but um, I didn't have my phone for 27 days. And uh, everyone should do that, if you can. What, go to rehab? <laughs> uh, go no phone and just basically, if if I wish insurance would pay for it without you having to tell them that you have any sort of substance problem. Maybe not a month, but like two weeks, you do nothing but like work on yourself and you can watch TV, I guess if you want, but it's like a, as I'll get into, if you want it to be, it can be like a 16 hour a day boot camp for your mind, body, and soul. So I decided I was going to do this and obviously in conjunction with my wife before we went to Cleveland. So I just, we, we drove down there the next day. So for my situation, as I learned when I got there, um, was Jake here when I, had to get the new battery for my phone because I went an hour without my phone and it was like the most excruciating hour that I've lived. Try in taking last. a dump for 27 <laughs> days without one. Without a phone. You're like, what well, do I do? And you you do like four times a day. So yeah. That's, that's a lot of dumps. A lot of time. Yeah. No, um, that was while he was here because we mocked you for printing out your workout. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I just know being without a phone, it's it's terrible. Yeah. Like, I, it's terrible the way I feel about being it's, without yes. a phone. Like, I can't, if I get in the car to go to the grocery store and I forgot my phone, turn I'll around. turn around. You could be in the parking lot. I was just you know? going for five-minute drive yeah. and five-minute back, but I have to have that phone. All right, sorry. No, you're good. That's probably not as important as going to rehab. Yeah, and that's what I call it, by the way. They want you to call it inpatient treatment or a treatment facility, but let's be honest. It's fucking rehab. Well, right? well it's both, I guess, right? Yeah, but we don't need to dress it up. They're treating right? you. I still call it Indian style when I yeah, sit okay. down, you know? Yeah. Um, so I talked, my wife and I had made the decision before uh, we went to Cleveland, and she just drove me down the next day. And for me, it was pretty More much, her idea than your idea? Um, Maybe, but honestly, like, I know. Mm -hmm. You know? It wasn't like an ultimatum, but I know. I well, Something I have to guard against when I talk about this is when I got there and really started talking to people, realized I was not... <laughs> I was not necessarily consuming my DOC drug of choice to the degree that basically anyone else there might have been, but I still wasn't going to be able to stop completely, which is what I wanted to do on my own. It just wasn't going to happen. I needed like a drastic measure because I could cut back. I could stop for a month. Last year, I stopped anything for five months, and then we got sued, and I lost my fucking mind. Um, but I, I just had to buy in and be like, this. I haven't tried this. Can you I, say what your DOC is? Yeah, I think yeah. It's uh it's uh donuts. No, yeah, just alcohol. I don't have a problem with anything else. I've tried a lot of other stuff and I've never had a problem with it. Um which is also kind of unique because that's just based on my experiences. But um yeah, we own our own business, so that made it a lot easier. Dan and Blake were both to super what? to, to just bolt go for yeah. three and a half weeks. You were kind of the push over the edge of like it's fine we got it it's not the end of the world uh blake and i went to dinner the night before we got back and talked about it y'all were both super supportive um and then eventually when we talked to the whole team everybody was su super supportive so i was like you know what let's just let's just do it um it's gonna suck but it's the only way i'm gonna get to where i want to go to where i can be the best version of me in every way and obviously there were parts of it that were horrible most of what we're going to talk about probably in like an extra weekly podcast series is how flat out hilarious the whole experience is. This is just like the serious part, I guess. Get it out of the way. And then I can tell you about, I got stung by a scorpion. What? <laughs> how all that, how that whole morning. That part went. of the treatment? <clears throat> it might've been, you know, the, the, it's funny you say that because were there, leeches there were a lot of things, <laughs> there were a lot, a lot of things that happened there that would be really frustrating uh, lack of communication, lack of organization. Um, and I thought maybe they're doing this to piss us off to see how we react. Like, is this a genius? Is it like Jerry? Right. You know, and the way he runs a team, he's like, you know, our uh, consistency is that we're inconsistent. Yes. That's sometimes how it felt. And because honestly, life is going to be full of things that suck. Yeah. 
So why don't we make it suck more than it would in regular <laughs> life by, you know. Yeah. So it's not um, like a resort vacation no. where everything is <laughs> No, it was in a nice place. Foot. It was on the down near the hill country, like south part of the hill country, and it was a really pretty place. It used to be a hunting lodge. Um, it sits on like several thousand acres. Um, I love that part of the state. I would not have wanted to do it in a city. You know, like I could take, it was a lot of walks. There was a gym, which was better than I thought it would be. Um, and I'll get to all that as we talk about it. But basically, I wasn't going to pull this off without a pretty drastic measure. And so for me, like I basically started consuming alcohol the way that I think most people do, like in college. I wasn't trying to mask any pain or address some sort of like emotional situation. I was just drinking because it was fun and that's what people did. And it was fun. It was pretty awesome. And then as I got older and older, uh, it was like, well, this actually makes me feel better and forget about things that I don't want to think about. You know what I mean? And then also, I think it's a great lubricant for meeting people and learning about people. So like when Kristen and I would travel, if you want to find out what people who are wherever you are in some far flung country, if you want to find out how they live and what they think, go to the bar. That's what you did with the – somewhere in Mexico, you just ran into a bunch of Canadians or something? What was that? Yeah, that was in uh, Puerto Vallarta, but, I mean, anywhere. Like, I have fantastic memories of being everywhere in the world, and at night you pull up to a dive at 11 o'clock, have a few, and you're going to have a good time. You're going to learn And you're going to learn about yeah. stuff that you're not going to get on a tour, you know? So I do enjoy that part of it, but for me – it just became, as I got older, like a, hey, I have some problems, uh, and this thing is a problem because I'm using it to cover up those problems rather than actually trying to address it. And I've been to therapy. Um, there is a lot of value in that. Um, last year, I went to like group therapy in Southlake. It's not AA. It's a class. It's basically like a college class. It was eight to 10 weeks, three nights a week, and you're just in a room with like 10 or 12 other people, and you talk. And they'll show you TED Talks and stuff like that. But mainly the talking part was helpful. And that was weird because that one was like, dude, there was never a time I was in there that there wasn't at least one pilot from American Airlines. At least two, like, surgeons. You know, not like, hey, I'm an RN or I'm a nurse. Like a neurosurgeon and an anesthesiologist and an ER trauma surgeon and a CEO of some company and, you know, a software executive. Probably some lawyers. Oh, yeah. I, definitely a few lawyers. This time was a little different. <laughs> this time was a little different, as I'll get to. But, you know, as they say, like, it doesn't discriminate. And so for me, it just, I I wasn't stopping. You know, I would stop for a little while. Like I said, when I did that bit last year, I stopped for four or five months. And then I was able to kind of keep it in check for a few months. And So did, did you, like, have to detox? Well, like so. physically, you're. Yeah, I mean. You had to have it. And then the so first can, couple nights, like, I'm thinking of a. Hardcore drug rehab or something where they're shaking in well, the bed and, so, and so, puking in a bucket next to the bed. Yeah, so I was going to get to that later, but since you brought it up, I can tell you that I didn't really have that issue. Um, I did have like a couple drinks on the way down with my wife because I was really freaking out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got made fun of by people there, like in a gallows humor, joking type way for blowing like a .07 they make you do that right when you walk in the door? Oh, yeah. And several other people were like, yeah, I don't remember getting here. They're, oh, they were just saying that's weak. They were like four times the legal limit. Okay. And these are some of them were just normal, you know. You would look at them and not think like, oh, this guy's a junkie or something. So those people, if you're in really bad shape, you're going to have some pretty serious detox time. And they give you like a ton of medication if you want it. So they have like what they call a taper which I guess is just supposed to do what it says it does, like taper you down so that you don't have like crazy withdrawals because you can die if you're bad enough. Yeah, in the old days, if you were so physically dependent upon alcohol and you just quit cold turkey, it would literally kill you. Yeah, heroin and alcohol, that will kill you. So what, they give you like one beer a day or something? No, 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 it's a medication that oh. kind of seemed like it was, uh, <laughs> well, cool, I have yeah. heard of that. And in, in some ways- Not light beer for this week. In, yeah. in some ways, that's kind of what I did. 
Like I went from, hey, I'm having four or five, you know, almost every day to like before I left down to, like I said, two. On, on Sundays, they give you a placebo in the form of a Coors cutter. Well, dude, I mean, have you you remember uh, 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 Uncle Daycare on Gillian Keeves? Yeah. Where they're like, they're scheduled for one beer at eight o'clock, yeah. one beer at 1130. <laughs> So what they they don't give you alcohol, but they'll give you like a what they call a taper, which is seemed like it was a feel good drug of the highest degree. Did you get any of that? No, I didn't take anything. Ah, uh. I didn't need it. They wanted me to take an anti seizure medication. I was like, I've never had a seizure, and I'm not about to have a seizure. Like, look at my levels. Look at my blood pressure. They'll give you like an insanely high dosage of sleep medication, um, of the same medication I take, but I take fifty of it. 50 milligrams, which is the lowest one they make. And I don't even know if it works for me anymore. They would be giving people two or 300 milligrams. And they are just gone for four or five days. Okay, let so me ask I you this. I got there, I was like, I don't want any medication. I'm not having any problems. When can I go work out? And they're like, not for five or six days. And I got them to convince me to let me do it on day three. I, they don't want you working out because you could die. Mm. So I didn't take anything. And during that time also, you don't have to go to any meetings, any appointments, any group time, because they assume you're fucked up to the point where they don't need you walking around. Did you have any of the- For me, like on the second day, I read half of Boys in the Boat and walked like four miles. Did, did you? Did any of the staff at any point check in on you and you're kind of fine and normal and go, are you sure you're supposed to be here? Well, no. I mean- because, because there's you, a couple you things. described One, it at, at other people showing up, making fun of you for blowing a point oh six, and these guys are showing up like four or five times over the legal limit. Yeah, but it's still just a thing of it's alcohol. Maybe the day before I was, they don't know that. Yeah, that's true. You know, and it's still with alcohol and with opiates, you're gonna have to have a bad time. <laughs> uh, most people. For me, I I was just depressed because I was there and I was fucking crushed and I missed my family and I missed you guys. If you look at my journal from the first couple of days, it's pretty rough. But then I just started going to everything. I just started going to classes that, you know, they're like, you know, you don't, they, they would literally tell you like, you don't have to do this. I'm like, I'm not just going to lay there all day. Yeah. You're like Zeke being in the quarterback meetings. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> You're exactly the Zeke right. of the rehab center. That's exactly right. So uh, did you have something you wanted to. A little bit slower than yeah. we thought you were. <laughs> did you have something you wanted to say before I. I feel like you were about to well, I project. I was, but then I don't know, because I know we want to save some of this, and we want to keep- 10 hours of stuff. You know, if we just do like a Business Wednesday type series and just talk every Wednesday for an hour or something, like that's, it's good for the subbies and all that kind of stuff. You it's know? good stuff, too. Keep I, it behind a paywall. I, but I was going to just ask, because you mentioned going to sleep, and I remember when I was uh, drinking quite a bit more- Back in the day, and I remember a movie that I saw. It was Rodney Dangerfield, and he was a guy just doing lots of drugs and drinking and all this kind of stuff. And in, in order to get an inheritance, he had to clean up. He had to be clean for like a year or something. And I can't remember the movie's name. Was it Brewster's Millions? or? It's not that because that was uh, a different actor. But what he what his line was that me and my buddies would always reference was, uh, I don't know how to go to sleep. I only know how to pass out. And that was like my life. Yeah, I uh, wasn't doing that. For some time. Okay, that's what I didn't, like, so you're still able to go to bed and get to sleep and yeah. not without, okay. Yeah, I mean, I was obviously at some, some days like hiding it from my wife, but I would not get to the point usually where it was like super obvious. But I was still, if you're hiding it, if there's something that you're hiding. Easy money, and Rob so, tells me. That's if, what it's called. Yeah. If there's something that you're hiding or something that you want to quit and you can't quit on your own, then you have a problem. Yeah. No matter what it is. No matter how much you're doing, you, that's just what it is. And that's what it was for me. There's no other way to describe it than that. So just a timeline again is like after last year when we got sued, I know we talked about it openly and emotionally, <laughs> but I had a really hard time with that. Like I was enraged by the whole thing. I really wanted to like hurt somebody. <laughs> uh, I was sad. I was depressed. I had like a breakdown, and I was like, I Probably can't. Scared a little bit too, for sure. And so uh, I just started back up and never really completely stopped again. So I wanted to. I don't want to moderate. I don't want to cut back. I wanted to stop. You know, because I want to be alive. I want to be healthy. So um, are you no longer a guy that can just have a beer? 
No, I mean, I don't. Obviously, there's always going to be a part of me. I, I guess I'll just speak for me. We use I statements here. Mm. Is that what they say? Of course. Um, there's always going to be a small part of me that thinks that I could, but I also know what that comes with. I mean, dude, there were people there. I there was a guy there who was in his mid forties. Can you still do blow? Please uh, tell me yes. We'll see. Okay. Please yeah, we'll see. Tell me yes. Um, there was a guy there. H Lati- Latino Mom. guy, and when I talk about these people, I am going to mention their races every time. That's an important factor here, and it's okay to do because it was not all white people. Okay, you know, usually when it's like ninety percent white people, you don't say like, "Oh, he was a white guy." Okay, at least white people don't say that. So this guy is a Latino guy from Amarillo, super cool dude. Um, gave me a haircut while I was there. <laughs> okay, yeah, he he cuts it's hair looking on the weekend. Tight. Yeah, I got two of them up, which I'll explain. Um. He was sober for 10 years, from like 28 to 39, and went on vacation and drank once and went on like a three-and-a-half-year bender. So kind of like, remember Josh Hamilton, like had yeah. one beer and yeah. all of a sudden his shirt's off. Yeah, he's, people are licking he's, whipped cream off his nipples. Yeah, he's, he's buying Coke. He's doing everything like yeah. from one beer. Yeah, so, you know, you get into a lot of stuff um, that they teach you about – a lot of the stuff I knew because these people only have so much material for the curriculum. You know, I'd seen a bunch of the videos before, um, or like the TED Talks or the worksheets and the, th- the cognitive behavioral therapy and all that. Mostly what it is, is it's just like the feeling of this would, this deal where I have no freedom at all, this is what my life would be like if I really fucked up, but not quite there. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what it would you be like ahead if, I, if I lost my family. Because I can't see them, I can't talk to them. So that plus hearing from other people and their experiences, like really is the program. It's the people. So Do you identify now with Jim Irsay? Are you like, that's a brother of mine now that Man, I don't know because I, get along? I know that he bought the big book original manuscript for several million dollars, but man, yeah. he's still I think he lives pretty wild still. <laughs> like, Just in a different way. Yeah. I don't know. I I feel like he's been arrested since then, but in any case, you know. It sounds like what you're describing is seeing all the lives of these people that you were in there with. You were kind of seeing possible. Scared out, straight. Out, out, outer yeah. lines of a, of a potential ripple effect if you'd have stayed on the same path. Yeah, and, and also those people also have a great chance if they put the work in for that to be their last time too. You know, if you're alive, you have a chance. So I'm not saying that like mine was like like so much better and oh now I know from seeing how bad theirs was. Mine it's was bad relative. because I couldn't stop. And so, you know, there's an obvious like disease choice thing, which I know Dan and I have talked about before. There's a really I'd seen this movie before, documentary. Yeah, is it a disease? So there's this really corny thing on YouTube. Um, the production is ridiculously corny. It could it's I think it's an hour and a half. It could easily be 40 minutes, but it's called Pleasure Unwoven. And it's by a doctor named Kevin McCauley. He was a doctor in the military and eventually was a doctor in the military who was in jail in the military for writing his fake scripts for himself and taking like 50 pills a day. But he has like a really good breakdown of the whole thing. And I also understand there are going to be some people who never see it that way. The way he puts it and walks it through is it's not a disease. It's not a choice. It's a disease of choice. So in your situation of, I think the one he uses is like it's an old West saloon and, uh, you know, there's an alcoholic, which he makes look really funny because the production's hilarious. His face is all messed up. He's like rubbing his lip all drunk style old West. And a guy hands him a glass of whiskey and says, you can have this, but I'm going to shoot you in the head. And the guy says, well, no, I'm not going to have it. So that would say it's a choice. Yeah. But his point is that can say that about cancer. His point that is if you that you don't get rid of that cancer else. Right. That the guy who is an addict is still kind of thinking, I want that. Okay. <laughs> and still kind of thinking, I wonder if he actually has bullets. Or still thinking, you know what, I don't even care as long as I get the blunt? drink first. Yeah. Or maybe the gun won't fire. And that part of it in your brain is what he would say satisfies. But I don't care. People there's gonna be people who don't see it that way. And I fully understand that and accept it. There's going to be people that are like, why don't you? you like you just, can't check into a cancer rehab center and then just because you're away from the cancer, it means you're No, but it's kind of like, with, you know, with like diabetes, for example. You know, you some people eat their way into diabetes. And you can eat your way out of it. And if you get treatment, 
and you do the right things and eat your way out of it, it can either become a non-factor in your life or you can, I don't know, you can't cure it, but you can have it not affect you anymore. Diabetes is widely accepted as a disease, type two anyways, as like a, you kind of got yourself here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of people with diabetes uh, too still eat like shit because they, yeah, can't, no, it's they like, can't stop. I don't know, is high blood pressure a disease? Yeah, cholesterol, high blood pressure, stuff like that. Because that's why I started eating a lot better. Yeah, my cholesterol was a little losing high. losing some weight because they're like, this will help you lower your uh, blood pressure. And then they're like, eh, but you haven't lost enough. So here, we'll just give you this medicine. Yeah, I'm which like, I'm cool. sure there's no side effects from. I don't know. So the last <laughs> thing I'll just say, I guess, and we'll talk about this a lot. If people have questions. I'll try to answer them on the show. I'm not, I'm not going to probably answer every email because there's a lot. But I do have some hilarious stories. Maybe I'll tell you just a little bit here, and then we'll save them for the the separate series. But I do think in some ways having this job prevented me from taking more drastic steps earlier because I didn't really ever want to— Now, this is to... where he blames us. No, no, no. Not... fine. <laughs> oh, it's okay. okay. Yeah. I, uh, I don't—I was always really embarrassed. You know, I didn't want, like some people, you have a job. I mean, even like I said, those pilots or those doctors, like they're oh, embarrassed about the public knowing. Yeah. they And, and even, um, yeah, the public knowing and having to say to people like in a very different way, you know, people I would talk to would be like, man, I'm going to have to tell, you know, so many people, like there's got to be at least 20 people that I'm going to have to break this down to. And I'm like, yeah, well, mine might be in the tens of thousands. Um, total. So cocky. But the good news is I kind of only have to do it once, you know? Yeah. It's just a really weird deal that most people— that Once and every Wednesday for the next— uh, Yeah, but that part's fine. I just yeah. mean this part that sucks of admitting it, owning it, feeling shame about being away from the show. Did you have to say that? Feeling Did you have to say, hi, my name is Jake and I'm al alcoholic and they're like— You could say recovering alcoholic. That's only AA, though. The rest of the program— Okay, so this isn't AA. You have to go to AA every night. During this? Yeah. Okay. And it's led by someone there. I led two of them, you know. Oh, all right. Yeah, felt back in the element a little bit. Um, People uh, were really into the- into Kind of used to this, public speaking. Mm -hmm. Dude, honestly, <clears throat> I- uh, You guys talk cowboys? I made an- uh, <laughs> I also have a lot of watching cowboys with people in treatment talk for you, but- Okay. Dude, I made an outline for- Why are uh, they running the ball again? <laughs> they keep going nowhere. They're the reason I'm here. I- <laughs> No doubt. <laughs> yeah, I made like a, a run sheet for the two AA meetings I led, like it was a show. <laughs> okay, we had news at the end, and well, why yeah. today doesn't yeah. suck, and <laughs> sponsors, like <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> this dark story is brought to you by ProSlat. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you didn't have to do that in class, though. You know, it was just a class where you'd be an hour, and there'd be fifteen minutes of a break. Um, you didn't have to introduce yourself like that because okay. really, dude, it is like being on the real world addicts because you're with the same people <laughs> all the time. And maybe you've seen that. OK, I've never seen that. No, no, I've made it's that a big up. Show, yeah. But it's oh, something that I'm sorry. It, it just sounds <laughs> I thought like, it was like a Dr. Drew show. Or no, no, they like had like celebrity real. rehab. Yeah, yeah, once yeah. Upon okay. A time, but we all were like, I'll waive my HIPAA rights if we can get this thing sold, because every single day, if not one, there were or if not uh, at least one, two or three crazy sh shit that would happen. Crazy. I mean, you got 40 people who are all kind of trying to quit drugs or alcohol who go to class together, they eat together, uh, we're in rec club, like we're volleyball. Uh, all dudes? No. Oh. No, it was probably 60% dudes. Some hooking up? No, I mean, I've heard that that does happen. For sure. Do they say anything at the beginning like, hey, if we oh, find course. out that you guys are hooking up, you're kicked out? Yeah, I don't know if they kick you out, but I know that it's definitely uh, not good. Because I would imagine a lot of, for a lot of people that go through addiction, they go through treatment like that, it, it, sometimes it's replacing one with another, and sex can definitely fall under that. Category. Yeah, and so there was a guy who worked there who was awesome. He was like the guy that led fitness – like they had workout classes twice a week that he would lead with like 12 dudes, usually the younger dudes in one, the older dudes in another. And if you wanted to go – What are you? 
Younger, for sure. Okay, I didn't know. <laughs> if you wanted to like really get like after mid- it, that 45, 50 minute workout was easily as hard as anything I ever did in APEC in Fort Worth where Mahomes and all those guys trained. Like if you wanted to go get it, my my workout partner was like a 26 year old dude, Latino dude who was a mailman who was, uh, had a cocaine problem. He was not really a drinker. Mm-hmm. He was and just sprint between houses. We got fucking <laughs> after it, big time. He was done by noon. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> um, I don't even remember how I started talking about that. But. Uh, uh, oh, the guy who led the drugs. fitness class? Oh, yeah. He just got out of treatment like a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. And he's like, in the orientation thing, he's like, you do not get a rehab boyfriend or girlfriend. He's like, trust me. Oh. <laughs> he's like, it's a bad idea. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm he's interested. Like, You've got two red flags, yeah. walking red flags. Dude, can you like, imagine what are we that's, that's your foundation. That's yeah, the greatest yeah. Yeah, he's like sex you'll ever yeah. have. He Rehab just kind of looked up. at all of us. Rehab he's like, up? just trust me. Because you know you'll get kicked out, and then if you get kicked out, but we got each other, just, baby. Yeah, mm-hmm. just check into a hotel and go on a bender with her. Yeah, that sounds like a great It'd idea. Be great. Yeah, <laughs> sounds gotta fun. bet that happens all the Shoot. time. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, dude. <laughs> Somehow I was not really thinking about that part of my uh, my I guess brain or anatomy at all, but there definitely were dudes who were. <laughs> Like, there were some horny motherfuckers in there. <laughs> <laughs> and most of them had been to prison, mm. which I think in prison it's pretty common to just verbally, constantly Talk abuse about- and hit on the, the correctional officers. Mm. And maybe whip it out and show it to them. Okay. Do you see any whipping it out? I heard of we one. We're saving this for Wednesday. I heard of one. <laughs> okay. I heard of one. So uh, the way I heard of it was from my roommate. Uh, so when you first get there, they make you go to a detox thing, even if you're not detoxing. You don't have to go to class if you want. So I did. You're in a room, and it's like a, like I said, it's an old hunting lodge. So and like I think it became a wedding venue. So imagine a room. I don't know. This is kind of hard to explain, but it's basically from the pro slat wall. Thank you, proslat.com, to where Rob sits. So I don't know what that distance is. And then the detox, there would be three beds in there, and it, it was nice. And a TV. So then you have two roommates. And there's a nice bathroom. Then they move you when after like 10 days to a smaller room. That one just has two beds, but it's also a nicer room. I mean, it's not like you're in a motel. How much stuff do you pack? Uh, Like, is it just a carry-on? I don't know. I brought like our big suitcase. Uh-huh. Yeah, and my wife shipped me some stuff. Because do you do laundry and stuff? Yeah. This is probably too much We'll get into that. No, you do laundry. I will tell you one thing about taking my wife's suitcase. Um, She took it on her most recent work trip, and I thought I got everything out of it. Um, And then when they they take everything out of all your bags. I was going to say, they got to search probably. It takes like four hours before you get your stuff. You can't have a shampoo bottle. Everything has to be closed. Because it might be. Nothing open. Did they jack the fleshlight? Hold on. (laughs) Not quite. But so they take everything out of every, every one of your bags. They don't give you a lot of your stuff until you Did they you check move your room. anus? No, but they did have me like lift my sack up. And okay. I so heard you get about a nude check. I heard about a girl uh, a week after I got there. I didn't find out until the next day because as I'll get to, I was getting in bed at 7:45 every night. So when I would get up in the morning, I would hear about everything that happened the night before, uh-huh. and I would just write it all down. Uh, she came in a bit hefty. Sounds like okay. Did not know that in her check they were going to ask her to lift the titties. She had a heroin and a needle. Whoa. Damn. What? Taped under her heaving bosom. Taped. Oh my God. Yeah. Would that be weird like on a date? Yeah. You'd be like, what? Rip the bar off. What, what are these yeah, doing under all here? All of a sudden you're just mm-hmm. nodding off. <laughs> God. So um, the wife's suitcase? Yeah. So the wife's suitcase, they, 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 they brought. Uh, they don't bring the suitcase back. They bring all your shit back in a laundry bag. And then everything but your computer and electronics in your backpack. So I had my books. Boys in the Boat? The Little Men in the Boat? Good. Un- unreal. Yeah. And I continued my- Tim McDow- Collishaw gave me that. My McDowell tour of early 20th century uh, Europe, about halfway through with the Guns of August. Oh, that's oh, a great yeah. book. Yeah. Hey, World War One. That's the World War One. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What a mess. Yeah. <laughs> you think? It would have started even without the uh, kind of seems assassination. Like, yeah. Right? It both would have sta- started without it the It was Archduke. a powder keg, I, sh- I tell you. Also, uh, you might me? not have needed to happen. 
Yeah. In retrospect. Yeah. Certainly didn't need to drag out as long as yeah. you did. Yeah. So they bring you back your books. They bring me back. Trench a, warfare. A laundry bag uh, full of all my laundry, and I'm unpacking it, and there's a pair of my wife's underwear in there. Hey, now. That she had left, like, zipped in one of the tiny pockets from the mm-hmm. last time she took it on a trip. So now I'm like, all right, there's they a couple thought- scenarios here. Either they think that I brought these <laughs> underwear for me. Because occasionally I like to wear a thong, or that I'm going to jerk it to my wife's underwear while I'm here. But Both either way, plausible. The outcomes. staff member that I'm going to see for the next month, every day, he just packed this lady's thong in my. Uh, Did you have to like explain to him, or you just let him think? Well, who knows what this guy? It was into? in the bag, and then I just let it go. Awesome. Yeah. So the last thing I'll say about it before we uh, before we move on to something of more importance. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you about my roommate. Than your health, Jake. I'm going to tell you about my roommate. You know what okay. To say, I don't know. My roommate, who was my roommate in detox, the detox room. Um, he did need to detox. I think when he first got there, he went to the hospital for a couple of days, and then when he came back, and I first went into the room, he was on everything that they w- would give you, and he was out like zombie. And I just thought, I don't want that. I don't want any medication. But by the next day, next day after that, he was super, super cool. He is from the Valley, I think McAllen. Okay. Like five minutes from the border. Uh, he's about 5'4". Extremely gay. Mm-hmm. Like the most effeminate dude you've ever met and takes pride in it. And he's also like the most street smart and after seven, eight years locked up, the most prison smart person you could ever meet in your life. Like wow. he's a bad motherfucker, but he also like might give you a Z snap mm-hmm. <laughs> and he had two robes with him. He acquired an iron somehow <laughs> among many things he acquired. And I'm going to wait till I know he's out to tell you what all, none of it illegal, but stuff might weren't supposed to have. He would lay out his clothes every day. He would iron his clothes. Could never get my bed to look like his bed. Um, what do you mean? Oh, just perfect. like he's a Marine type perfect. thing? Okay. And we were both really clean, and that's why there's no guarantee you're keeping your roommate when you move to the two-person room. And we fucking biggest hug when we found out because he was like, you're clean. <laughs> he's like, I got to keep you, bud. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I got to keep you because you're hilarious and one of the most interesting people I ever met. This is him, Dan. Don't show this, but I just want you to get a feel for it. Nope. So I, I hit. Oh, my finger hit. The oh. Thing. He has. He's full sleeves, face tattoos, head tattoos, dresses super snappy. Uh. Oh, there he is. Okay. He's hilarious. He's a constant shit talker. <laughs> And uh, we were like, we became like best friends. Did you just say face tattoo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. He uh, bold would, statement when you're gonna do that. He had a couple like, I think he and he would say like, prison ruined my life. Like I wasn't a criminal. I got caught up in something. Mm-hmm. What I, was he into? Alcohol. Drugs. What? Okay. I think he might have been into the commerce side of drugs, but mm-hmm. not right. the consumption side of drugs. And uh, he was freaking hilarious, dude. And he was. So such you a got sweet his digits. Guy. Oh, yeah. You're going to remain in touch A with lot him. of people give you digits, but uh, we actually, like, each, without knowing it, left each other a letter <clears throat> when I was leaving. Left each other a letter? Yeah. Like, he was awesome. Somewhat of a love letter? Yeah. Dude, we literally were like, a lot we were an old gay couple. That's great. Like, I would, we would take each other's laundry. We'd bring each other, like, extra snacks from the lunchroom <laughs> that we weren't supposed to have. I you know, like, it. he had a, he acquired at first, Against the rules, and then eventually with the rules, uh, a radio from the pool area so he could listen to like their version of Kiss FM every morning while he got ready. <laughs> and he would get ready. <laughs> you know, he would eyelash curl, foundation. Stop. Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Yeah. He was a bad bitch, as he would say. <laughs> <laughs> how long, how much longer does he have? Not long. Yeah. Not long. And we were, yeah. And so the, another thing about him, um, he really loved the Aaron Hernandez show. <laughs> ah, really? It was God, did you watch it? Yeah, he. You guys watch I, it I can't stop watching it, but he, it's so bad. He had read the book in prison, and he's the like, Belichick character, and the, yeah, and it's hilarious. All uh, Urban Meyer, but I he was like, oh, is that the cute one from from uh, that I read the book about? And I'm like, yeah, that's him. 
And so the first episode, you know, they're getting real into the gay stuff. And I'm like, man, is this uncomfortable? You know, I don't know if he how he feels about this. And then, like, the next day, he was like, what time is uh, the Aaron Hernandez cutie show on tonight? I'm like, it's every week, bud. And he's like, well, remind me. And so for four straight weeks, we would usually fall asleep between 8, me, me 8.15, him 8.45. On Tuesday nights, bud, we stayed up to watch what he called his boyfriend. <laughs> if you're going to bed at 8.15, what time are you waking up? Never in bed after 4 a.m. Whoa. I woke up at 4 o'clock on the dot, too, today, even though I didn't go to bed till midnight. Do you think that'll keep going for a while? Or I'll get back to, like, 5.15 pretty soon. Yeah. But we stopped setting the alarm because I would get up at 4, and he was always up by 4.30 to 5. God, I wonder if you're – your rehab roommate would ever appear on here. Oh, they he does, and the guy, the other guy we had from our original room does. He they want to early fifties, yeah. He's early fifties, and he had done off and on, I think, thirteen years in the clink. And, yeah, wow. So that was my first day. <laughs> so I was like, holy shit, man, Jeez, okay. man, this is a little bit different. But yeah, Eddie, Eddie loved the Aaron Hernandez show. That's the only night we would stay up. <laughs> like the first time. It was the second time he watched it. He was like, mm. he's like, if I had met this man, he's like, he'd be paying child support. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you one thing real quick. Did at, at any point in 28 days, I'm, I guess. Yeah, I think I left at 27. Did you ever feel unsafe or have any fears? At least three times. Okay, and and number two, were there ever any conflicts with other with me and with other, other other people? Yes, or other? yes, with you. Did you ever have any problems with any where you felt like? I think this guy might want to kick my ass. Not really. Nothing? I would say there's either zero or half of one. And um, the coin of the realm at the treatment facility rehab folks. Sigs? Vapes? Anything yeah. nicotine, dude. Yeah. <laughs> anything. Lucy? There is no, I would say 90 to 95% of the people there are consistently using one, if not two, nicotine products, whether it's dip pouches yeah get yourself a lucy which i had gave them to a couple people and they're like whoa this is way better what is this and i'm like let me get you a promo code <laughs> uh, it's dumb zone yeah and so that <clears throat> vapes people who didn't smoke at all vapes are there's nobody there not but the vape is a huge uh plus not only does i think it's probably not as bad for you oh not stinky when you get a 15 minute break every hour the cigarette people have to go smoke but I would just stay in the class and keep writing and reading and vape because mm -hmm. there's nobody in there to tell me to stop. So every day there's probably five 15-minute smoke breaks. I just mm -hmm. created an hour and 15 minutes. I'm like, I literally became like one of those douchebags on Instagram and TikTok that's like, I'm getting three days out of every 24 hours. Here's yeah. how. Yeah. That's how it was. I would eat all my meals in five minutes or less and then go on a 10-minute walk. And the meals were either an hour for uh, breakfast and dinner or an hour and 30 for lunch. I just banked almost four hours right there, or three and a half. That was a food. Not it's bad. fine. The, the breakfast, phenomenal. Yeah. Hard to screw it up. They do a huge thing of scrambled eggs, then potatoes, a meat, tortillas. It was fine. It was really good. The rest of it, you know, you'd have your hits and misses. But they're trying to get people to gain weight. Most people come in there way underweight because either they're only drinking and not eating or they're only using a drug and not eating. As I told Danny, I was kind of doing the worst of both. I wasn't drinking enough to not make me want to eat, so I was drinking enough to get a ton of empty calories from alcohol and then still eating like a normal person or a fat ass. <laughs> Whereas, like, you know, there was a guy in there who was lost. He gained 25 pounds in 15 days, and he looked normal. Are you happy you did it? I feel dead ass the best I've ever felt in my entire life. In every single way. Just like Zeke. and There was a moment yeah. like two and a half weeks in, not to get all weird on you, where I looked in the mirror and I was like, son of a bitch, I'm proud of myself. Good for you. Like I actually looked in my eyes and was like, I got a little fire that I hadn't had in a while. When like I you got at hard looking at yourself? Yeah. And I immediately, I didn't even have to jack off. I just came. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> That's the goal for all of us. Yeah. No, that's how that's the <laughs> to level love of, yourself that that's much. the level of mind control I have now. Like yeah. if I just think of everything that I've accomplished, I just come. Oh, I wonder if you can make me do it just looking at me. I that's the next step. Yeah. Yeah, but I was I was I <laughs> terribly missed the show because this is what I love doing. I terribly missed my kids. I'm very glad I did it when they're young enough to think I was at work, especially given <laughs> that we had just been in California, we had just been in Cleveland. 
Yeah, in the end, they won't know. I'll eventually tell They'll them. They'll know when I tell them. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably not that far off. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, the only conflict I had, Danny, was over the case of the missing vape, which mm-hmm. was a very long day. But once I realized that the guy uh, who I knew had probably, well, I knew had taken it, was not only bipolar, but was a full-on tweaker, good dude, but very unstable, I'm like, I probably don't want to push this issue any further. Let that one go. I can get another one yep. eventually. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of yeah, let that good. go. That's, I kept my head That's down. wise decision-making that you might not have had. Hundred percent. Were you a, uh, a, a sloppy lush yeah. uh, in the cut gutter? Or There's whatever. no doubt. Or even before I did this, even if I wasn't drinking, I was a very reactionary, and I still have to work on that, you know. But I didn't complain about anything to anybody, as far as like the staff. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, it's their right because their insurance is paying a lot of money. They wanted their voice he- uh, heard every day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> So, anyways, I appreciate you guys, and uh, you know what, you really I'm fired should. up, dude, because I we're, got a lot. We're the real heroes here for making it uh, through all of this without you. Watched a lot of uh, McAfee because I had to to keep up with sports. Well, okay, had a lot of because uh, that was when you were gone. That's yeah, during lunch. lunch. Jake, so I wanted I would... to do a couple things before you got back, and I just, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, I just don't get things done. But uh, you know, mortgage mark. Yeah, of course. So they gave us this. This table. This is wow. a standing table. That's a great table. You didn't switch? Is it not plugged in? I don't know. It's not. It goes up. And so, yes, I wanted to have that table over here. But when I walked in. So you walk in. I'm doing. I'm standing doing the show. I'm wearing a <laughs> tank top. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't even told him about the electrons. Well, and we the, don't have time oh, for that. The grounding. Yeah. And I, I'd be wearing moccasins. Like, I was going to totally change my life. Okay. Just so that everything would be different. Grounding, but big topic at uh, treatment. Grounding? Of course. Okay. I can't wait. Maybe you need to go to treatment, I Dan. can't wait. I would love he to would go to not treatment. Treatment sounds great. He, would. he wouldn't last a day. Oh, sounds like a challenge. No, you would not You would not last. Sounds like a fantasy football league bet payoff. Someone telling you what you have to do all the time and what you have to eat and how you got to eat it, when you got to eat it, where you got to be, there's no chance, dude. You're right. You were about to... So I'll stop drinking. Deep throw a banana. Yeah. Just in the middle. No, you told me to stop and I stopped. See, I'm 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 compliant. I think you could do it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of McAfee. I got a reports on that. All right. It's gonna be interesting. By the way, uh last thing I'll say about the roommate, uh, like on day four or five, we were looking at the schedule and uh it was like when do we have to be there? And it's like it's fifteen minutes. I was like, that's fucking gay. Mm-hmm. And and I was like, ooh. And I looked up at him like a, you know, he's, deer in the headlight. He's gay. Yeah. And uh, he was like, I don't care. He's like, it's fucking gay. <laughs> so he did. He he agreed that it was gay. Yeah. I've heard him, I heard him use the the F slur a couple times. Which Were I you here with Noviello in studio? No. No. Yeah. You know Noviello's gay? I do. Like he's I got. I appeared on his show. And yeah, he, yeah, yeah, his, yeah. Uh, his husband. Um. Anyway, he was in here saying uh, he loved the old gay, not gay, and wants us to bring it back. Say less. If we got the, <laughs> right. If we got the cosign from yeah from Steve No Noviello, then I'd let's say, get your roommate in here. We're good to go. Like your roommate could weekly, you know, we'll do that. It'll be like picking games <laughs> with different guests, but we'll yeah. just have like a bunch of different uh, gay panelists. I love it. We'll do the gay version of the Steve no- Noviello show with panelists because he's always got like three people in there with him, mm-hmm. and we'll just do uh, we get three gay people. And then we just talk about, is this gay? Yeah. If we did gay, not gay, we called it that. Do we get sued by our former employer? Would they want to go to court to say, we own gay, not gay? Like, do you want to do that? I think you 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 shoot your shot, Dan. Do you want to put that... I don't know. It's interesting. It's an interesting thought experiment. Yeah, I don't know if you were... um, I was telling a story a minute ago about how going to court ruined my life and oh, I ended okay. up in a treatment facility a year later. So if we could... Let's not blame that. Just, well, let's just think about trying to avoid court, if if at all possible. All right. You don't want to have any fun. Should we sh- shift into sports? Hell yeah, brother. Okay. Because there was a game last night. Yeah, I was just 
My first question when I came oh, yeah, in I like is, uh, what do you plan on spending all those winnings on? <laughs> well, hold on. <laughs> For what? Wait. 5-0. and oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, obviously I missed that. <laughs> Almost got it. <laughs> We got to one and zero. They were down three touchdowns in week two. I was like, Jesus! Oh, dude, I you forgot got... you missed all of that. Jesus! Well, I mean, I watched every. That's right. Game. You left right after the Browns game. I had to get tricky then... about how to watch it. Sometimes, including the middle of the night when it would replay, but I, I would at least see like the first three quarters of every game, and then I would have to clean up the end of it. But yeah, it's like they lose by thirty, but I or they're to... down by thirty in the third or fourth, and all these games. I'm like, oh, Dan. I just wanted to – well, okay, we'll get to that. Yeah. But I wanted to mention that uh, – so last night we did have a uh, a live stream. We have six more live streams to go. No, wait. Was that our first one? No, no, no. That was our second one. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we have six more, uh, this including Sunday. this coming Sunday that, that you'll be on. And uh, do I have to not drink at the live stream now? Because, like – Hell No. Dude, I, I'm I'm just uh, I'm just housing those. You would have been uh, so proud of me. I I drank three whole beers last night. That's a Lone, solid solid beer right there. You Lone know Star the, Lights. You Blake know that's goes from with the Lone Star regular. The Lone Star State. That's right. The national beer of Texas. Anyway, um, but I actually didn't want to uh, focus on Lone Star at this moment. But I was going to focus on one of the guests out there was uh, seen, Sean, Sean Kernan. From 360 Wealth Management, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a uh, new sponsor as well. He's an independent guy. He says, I own my own practice. No one is the boss of me except you. He means us. And, or like the people that, you know, will employ him. Uh, and uh, the compliance people who could put me out of business on a whim if I joke about moosing or the Chisholm Trail. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So he's a big fan. If you give him a call, 469-893-0067, uh, or you could check out dallasfinancialplanner.net. You can see what he does. Check it out. Um, 360 Wealth Management is what it's called. So you go to that website, and you take a look right there. Look at that. There's a picture of Sean. And, like, I guess probably that's his family or something, or maybe just Sean ran into a bunch of people and said, would you take a picture of me? <laughs> um <laughs> They manage money for people that don't want to worry about it. They help their clients make money, live as long in retirement as they do. And they can help you avoid making large and irreversible mistakes. They help you consider the impact of taxes. And they protect against the uh, big risks to a successful financial plan. So if you are like you yeah, or me. Yeah, probably the vast majority. Yeah, like you need a guy like this, like Sean Kernan. So go to dallasfinancialplanner.net, dallasfinancialplanner.net. <laughs> He's great. And check out that website. See a little picture. Look, there's Sean and some lady. It's probably his wife. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> hope so. I don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing so. Or maybe yeah. would Sean just put his side piece up there? Like thinking, well, my wife will never go to my website. <laughs> That's a good point. That's what I would do. Yeah, it's like uh, zig when they zag, you know? Yeah. If you want to see a picture of Sean and his wife or some lady, uh, dallasfinancialplanner.net. He's great. I really enjoyed the copy point of, uh, you may have said this and I just missed it, but the do you need a third party to tell your wife or husband you're spending too much money? Oh, really? <laughs> That's an extremely relatable copy point. Yeah, okay. Listen, she may not listen to you, but I could probably, I could probably get it across. Okay, that's great. 